welcome to Essential Ingredients, powered by Next Gen Purpose. EI serves up thoughtful conversations with industry leaders and pioneers who support a regenerative future for our food system. The stories shared by our guests are meant to spark curiosity and inspire informed global change. Welcome to Essential Ingredients. I'm your host, Justine Reichman. Today with me is Skylar Thomas, an independent filmmaker. Welcome, Hello. Skylar. Thank you, Justine. Thanks for having me. I'm so pleased to have you here. For those of you that are not familiar with Skylar, Skylar is an independent filmmaker who is screening a film at the Mindful Eating Film Festival that is coming up the first week in August. That's coming up fast. I better get it done. <laughs> is it not done? <laughs> nope. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, they asked me to make it especially for the festival, so it's kind of a kind of a special situation. Oh, that is a special situation. So how far in advance did they ask you to make this film? It's a month and a half. But, a month and um, a half to make a film. I've been, uh, I've been, you could say I've been working on it because this has been an ongoing project for the last four years, the situation. And I go out there and I document, I get my own footage and I do my own research. And I just have this massive archive of stuff that I'm like, okay, I don't even, what am I going to do with this? Because it became overwhelming. And here came an opportunity to try and shove it into something digestible for an audience. We'll see if I'm successful. So this this didn't come out of nowhere. I mean, you've been you've been working towards this for the last four years. Uh, I've been working on Point Reyes, and it's such a complicated issue that I was kind of picturing it being maybe a five part series. But um, I think after this, I need to move on. <laughs> so I'm <laughs> I'm trying to explain everything in this film, and it's kind of important to do so. It's a local issue. I think that's one. That's another reason that they uh, were interested in this topic and uh, people seem to be interested in hearing more about it. They were interested in my last film, which was also on the topic, and things have only escalated since then, so it's it's pretty controversial. So before you go on, so let's, it's, it's called Elk Water. Am I allowed to announce that? Yeah. Okay, it's called Elk Water, and for those that are unfamiliar with the topic, could you talk a little bit about what you've been documenting and what your what this film is going to be about? Point Reyes National Seashore is part of our national park unit system, and it's in Marin County, uh, where you are, and on the coast. It's uh, very special in terms of being a biodiversity hotspot, or at least at one time it was. Um, at the time that it was purchased uh, by the government, the land was purchased, uh, they didn't have enough money to uh, get all of the land at once, so they entered into a uh, lease back system that was supposed to go on for 25 years or so depending on the specific lease and um and st which when that ended then the rest of the park uh, according to the uh plan for the park was to eventually all be restored to wild and be recreation for the people who in fact own the park but instead uh, it is now uh, controlled pretty strongly by the private businesses that have managed to stay there. And, and so, it's, it's creating a lot of conflict with the uh, wildlife. So you, you don't live in Point Reyes. So how did this come to your forefront and why is this so important to you? Well, like a lot of people, um, when you go to Point Reyes and you experience it, um, it's a special experience. Uh, people come from across the world to visit Point Reyes National Seashore and to see a place that special um, basically get turned into yet another feedlot is pretty upsetting mm -hmm. you know you can you can see that anywhere you can see that sort of damage and exploitation pretty much anywhere let's not have it here especially after we already bought the land for it not to be that yeah i can i can see why that would be i love point raise it was one of the first places i visited when i came here i was taken to um there you go and yeah. forest, and now as somebody that lives here, it is one of my more favorite places to visit. So, um, so, so now you've been working on this documentary uh, or on the film, and you've been documenting for the last four years. And so, in this last month and a half, you've been putting together this film. How did you get connected with them to put together this film? Um, well, they asked to. I showed Miyoko. I can't remember how she saw it, but she saw what was at the time just a passion project. I just made a film called The Shame of Point Reyes based on you know, being both heartbroken and outraged at what I'd seen out there. 
and it actually kind of caught on and stirred some things up and um they decided that they would like to have me back and uh Miyoko and I are friends um to an extent and she's actually been um vocal on the issue and has come to some of the events that try and raise awareness about the issue and so what was your ultimate goal when you decided to put together this film uh, what were you hoping to achieve with it originally i was just going to focus on the struggles of going out there and um, filming reality versus what was being portrayed to the public because there's a fair amount of deception going on um, which is you know unfortunate to say um, but one of the challenges of this film is you see what's happening out there and then you hear about some of the really terrible things that are being done to the wildlife etc and people are inevitably going to say well how is this possible well, why why on earth would they do that and so then you have to kind of interweave those answers which tend to be political um, and get a little complicated and it also you know ties in ecology because it's the ecology of the land being hurt which of course includes the wildlife like the tule elk who are center uh focus for the film and I've actually gone back to school and have been studying ecology, which has made it that much harder to witness the destruction going on out there because I have a better idea of what could be happening there and exactly what natural processes um, are being halted by private extractive businesses that are not only being allowed to be there, but we, uh, the citizens of the United States of America are subsidizing, whether we know it or not. Yeah. On September 23rd, Two members of the Point Reyes National Seashore Park Service staff went on live local radio, denouncing the concerns raised by citizens regarding the situation facing the fenced tule elk within the park. They stated that these activists were spreading misinformation and that the elk had plenty of water. The Park Service then published a map indicating that there were many adequate water sources within the Tule Elk Reserve. Fueled by the statements of the Park Service, two of these concerned citizens headed into the park the very next day to investigate these adequate water sources. Here's what they found. The Mindful Eating Film Festival examines the problems created by our modern agricultural systems and encourages participants to consider how our consumer and dietary choices impact climate change, the environment, our health, and the animals with whom we share the planet. Proceeds from the event will support over 90 rescued sanctuary animals residing at Rancho Compassion and dozens of students and community members through Rancho Compassion's humane education and visitor programs. So you're going back to school for ecology, it just begs the question, I'm just curious. Uh, you're documenting what's going on, you're seeing all these things that I can tell you're really, um, you know, you're, it, it impacted you on what you saw. Is there additional work you're hoping to do to have an impact on what you've seen there? I think it's going to keep carrying forward for sure. Um, you know, I, I, I was a filmmaker before this, Right. Uh, but I was I was focused on sharks, um, marine stuff, and um, this helped open my eyes to some terrestrial issues that are closer to home. And just getting into the ecology of it and the interactions between the the animals and the plants and the coevolution of what happened there for thousands of years and how that worked together. Put that next to what came in and how that doesn't work. Um, I find it fascinating. Uh, you know, when you're, when you're studying ecology, you can just keep going and going and going. Mm -hmm. Find out how one organism affects this organism, which affects this organism, which affects this organism, which is really cool. And then you bring in uh, agriculture and it just wipes it all out. So what do you, what if, you know, we talk about the next couple of years and you're studying ecology and you're doing your documentaries, what could we potentially see from you, do you think? 
after this, I, I want to go back to sharks for a while. I need a break. Um, I've got a film that I uh, stopped on uh, and I, and I'd like to finish that. I'd like to get in the ocean for a while. Um, and then I'll come back. Um, uh, God, who knows? I've got about 30 ideas in my head. So hopefully, <laughs> yeah, hopefully, hopefully uh, situations where people say, Hey, we would like to see this created will help direct me kind of like in this situation. Right. That, that's, that's the best kind of uh, opportunity, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so let's go back to the film festival um, for a moment. So you're going to be screening the film there once it's done shortly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can't wait to see I mean, those clips. The, the people there will literally be the first ones ever seeing it. <laughs> um, so that's going to come out in about a week and a half. So soon, right? Um, and so what are you hoping to, what are you hoping for the audience to get out of it? I'm hoping that it answers questions while um, emotionally rocking them. Uh, it, it's, it would be very easy for them to leave confused, like I said, because it's hard to wrap your head around how such atrocities as this are taking place. Mm -hmm. um, and the other goal is for me to, is I hope that people will not easily be succumbed by what seems to be a tendency to me to just be given an excuse and be like, oh, well, okay. Uh, it's all too often. Oh, well, it says on this piece of paper that we have to be horrible and terrible. So therefore it's okay. So uh, remind people that there is still a choice. I think that's a should. really important thing. Yeah, we need to strive to be better instead of finding excuses to not be. I think that's a really important message. So with all the other things that are going on at the film festival, are you familiar with what else is going on at the film festival? Have you checked out all the other films and- I, I know the smell of money, money. Um, is a big one on Saturday. Uh, Game Changers is being shown again. I think that was pretty popular on Netflix. Um, there's a special uh, panel to answer some of the more complicated questions about point rates that is separate from my film. They're having a one hour uh, panel in a separate uh, location. So people that want Are you to- you participating in that? I'm gonna listen. You're gonna, I'm gonna listen. listen. Okay. Yeah. Um, you might have maybe a few they'll... questions? They... <laughs> <laughs> I hope I know the answers by now, but there's always something more to learn. Um, <laughs> And I might get called on if I'm a fly on the wall to answer right. something, but they have a pretty good panel. They have a good panel, a device per panel, a diverse panel of pretty uh, educated people. So that'll be really beneficial uh, to anyone who wants to uh, uh, learn more about the situation above okay. and beyond what my film tells them. What your film tells you. So what else are you most excited about seeing at the uh, film festival? <laughs> my film. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very excited about seeing your film. I think we're all excited about seeing your film once it's done. <laughs> yeah, I haven't had much time to sit back and relax and get excited about seeing something else right now. I'm just uh, afraid that it's uh, okay. I'm just fair enough. Hope, hoping it won't explode on the screen. No, oh, I don't think so. Way. I don't think so. I think it's going to be great, and I think that it's going to it's going to be very eye opening. And I think you're going to have you're in a community of people with a community of people that are really interested um, and interesting. Uh, so I think that that's a really good combination um, and people that are like-minded and curious. So, um, and if they do get confused, they're going to have the panel to be able to ask more questions. <laughs> so I'm not sure what the schedule is like, which one comes first, but if it's in the right order, <laughs> yeah, that should help. <laughs> hopefully that's, hopefully that's who the audience is. Otherwise I might be getting lynched. <laughs> well i think this was great i'm so pleased that you were able to jo to join us and uh i got to learn a little bit about you and about the film and for those folks that want to learn more about you and your projects what's the best way for them to to look you up um shameofpointraise.org is the website for the first film and i'll just keep adding content to that one until i have uh, something official up for elkwater Awesome. That sounds great. Thank you so much, Skylar, for joining me here. And I look forward to meeting you at the uh, film festival and watching yeah. the film. Thank you. Thanks for uh, having me on. And I look forward to meeting you too.
Thanks so much for tuning into Essential Ingredients. As always, uh, we'll see you here again soon. To learn more about these episodes and access show notes, go to nextgenpurpose.com and choose podcast. If you like this episode, head to Apple Podcasts or your favorite platform to subscribe and leave us a review. Visit the Next Gen Purpose YouTube channel to subscribe to our EI videocast and give this episode a like while you're there. Follow us on Instagram and LinkedIn at Next Gen Purpose and connect with me on LinkedIn or Instagram at Justine underscore Reichman. Thanks for joining us.